a 2e. Like to, it says, do anything or enter into any arrangement which in the opinion of the authority is necessary to ensure the proper f performance of its functions. This sounds very, very wide to me. Probably too wide in the nature of the world that we live in. And I'd like to subject that after the word, its function, in keeping with this act. Um, this, the, 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 this provision itself is proscribed by paragraph one because 280E are all things which the authority may do in performing the functions specified in paragraph one. And paragraph one sets out all the things that it can do. So the authority is a creature of statute and that is what it does. So, I, so you're, the, the aim of your suggested amendment is achieved by the opening words of two, which incorporate all of the limitations set out in one. Have the amendments, the eighth schedule, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman? I put the eighth schedule, those in favor? Aye. I'm sorry, I put the amendments to the, to the eighth schedule, those in favor? Aye. Those against, the ayes have it. I put the eighth schedule as amended. Those in favor? Aye. Those against, the ayes have it. The amendments to the ninth schedule are set out on the said page 40, Mr. President. I put the amendments to the before, ninth. Before you do that, Chairman, Senator Floyd Morris had made a request, which I would like to know if it can be accommodated. That is to say that somebody from the disabled community ought to sit on the authority. on the authority. Maybe the suggestion to have a member of the community, absolutely. I think to designate that a representative of the council may not necessarily need to be so limited. So I think to, to say, um, to perhaps if that's what there is being looked at, a person who appears to be, um, or a person who, is, who is, appears to the minister to be representative of the community, we could add them into three.
While we look at the language, Mr. Chairman, would it be possible to simply recommit the first schedule to, have the, to make the amendments um, by deleting um, all references to clause 20 sub 5 and replacing them with references to clause 20 sub 4 in the first schedule? The question is, uh, we recommit, leader, the third question. Leader, uh, the question is, we recommit the first schedule to make the amendments as outlined. Those in favor? Aye. Those against, the ayes have it. Um, I submit the, the amended uh, sh first schedule um, those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. Thank you for your indulgence, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the proposed amendments to the ninth schedule, to the ninth schedule, Mr. President, in respect of, in paragraph one, three, um, no, how would we do this? Sorry, yes, in one, two, we would add a paragraph H. Sorry, yes, in paragraph 1, 2, we add paragraph H, which will say, a person designated by the minister responsible for persons with disabilities, comma, being a person who appears to represent the community of persons with disabilities, full stop. And then in 1, 3, B, we will change the word 5, to the word four. Delete the word five and substitute for the word four. That will allow the numbers to, um, to add back to eight, right? So can I just confirm that we're clear on the amendment, Mr. President? So in one, two, 
there will be a new paragraph H, which will say, a person designated by the minister responsible for persons with disabilities, comma, being a person who appears to represent the community of persons with disabilities, full stop. The second amendment is to paragraph 13B, in which we delete the word five and substitute with the word four. The question is, Because we're looking at an amendment, it says... You put on your mic, uh, speak the mic, please. The Thank amendment you. says, eight shall be ex officio members. And the, eight, the, the addition of the person with disability, for, sorry, from the disabled community would make eight. So... Men sheet, mm -hmm. To eight, yes, and for three... Oh, okay. So, oh, oh, it's not it's not impacted on by the amendment by the inclusion of the disabled. The question is. Uh, For you put the clause, the schedule. Two one. People who are ineligible for appointments. It limits at two one a to members of the House of Representatives or the Senate. To become a member of the House of Representatives, you have to be a candidate. It is conceivable under this that somebody who was a candidate for the House last could be appointed to the authority, thus defeating the objective of taking the political representation out of it. So I wish to propose that the 21A, that 21A says candidates to the House of Representatives and municipalities, right, in the last, at least in the last, last preceding elections are not eligible, and also to the Senate, but just to address the formulation, are not eligible. Because, you see, I've seen it done, where the parliament says, we don't want parliamentarians. Essentially, we don't want the politics into the authority. But we find a way to put losing candidates where winning candidates couldn't go. And I believe we need to address that. And there are numerous examples where the parliament says, don't put these people there. But if you lose, we'll find a way and put them there. It doesn't sound right to me. It's not consistent. Just uh, from the, the politics chair. out of the commission. Authority. Just from the chair, um, Senator Brown. Yeah. Are you therefore blacklisting losing candidates? Mr. Right now we blacklist winning candidates. So what I'm saying is that the way to do it to address this is not to blacklist winning candidates, but to blacklist if that term is the one and I don't like it, but is to make ineligible for appointment, whether winning or losing candidates. So I don't, I'm not into the blacklisting. I'm simply saying, if our objective is to take the politics out of it, the politics does not come only when you win. The politics come when you lose. And we should say no politics there. Win or loser. Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I understand the proposal being made by, the, by Senator Brown, um, but the intention of the clause is not to, um, and, and Senator Knight has made the point many times, that really the intention of legislation should not be to, um, to generalize and sort of accept and institutionalize a presumption, a, a negative presumption of 
association with a political process. The, the exclusion, how it was drafted here, the intention was to ensure that you remove the potential for conflicts of interest or inappropriate use of power. It was recognizing the difference between an ITA or other agency that reports to the parliament ultimately, as opposed to persons who, as opposed to just having a political association. So the balance that was found was to really exclude parliamentarians and senators, persons who are in the political, in the political process, and not just merely to look at an association with the political process. People who have power. So the, the amendment is, is not proposed, Mr. is not accepted, Mr. Pre Chairman. If you could put the amendments to Schedule 9. Therefore, the councillors who are not in the parliament and therefore no conflict of interest. Because you see, we're shifting the goalposts and we're shifting the argument. The purpose of this is really to avoid political people. You know, That's Senator Brown, is. Senator Brown, I did not recognize you. Excuse me, Senator Williams, Senator Gale, you need to go through the, through the chair. Otherwise we have, including Senator Brown, please go through the chair. I put, you did not. I put the, uh, the Ninth Amendment as outlined. No, no Mr. The Chair. Amendment to no, no, I, have, I have a point. Separate yes, point. Senator In page 162, clause 11, subsection 5, with respect to the quorum, we have a quorum of seven, but we only have two of the appointed members forming that quorum. So we have more ex officio member able to make up that committee. And I, 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 of a 13, was a 13 member, I think a seven is a really high, you're talking 50% there. I don't know if you want that, you might not be able to have meetings. Plus we have more, less appointed members being, making up the committee. And I think those are where you get the technical expertise. The FCO members are automatically, based on their, where they're from, they'll come and go. But I would probably call for a smaller number or increase the number of appointed members so you can have more guarantee in terms of having your meetings with respect to the quorum. Out of 13 members to have um, seven, I think the nature, of the, the nature of the discussions and the operations of the meetings should be such that you, you shouldn't have less than that, than that number present. Um, no, I'm not talking present in a form in a quorum. Present is different from a quorum. Is it to present to start a meeting? Seven. Policy is to have more than a half of the members present and that the ex officio, yes, as quorum in order for the meeting to function. So, Mr. President, if you could put the amendments to the ninth schedule, please. I put the amendment to the ninth schedule as outlined. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. I put the ninth schedule as amended. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. I put the title and enacted clauses. Um, those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. The question is that do report the bill as having passed committee stage with amendments.
one. With one six to one amendments, those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. I do report the bill. Yeah, that's what I said. I do report the bill as having passed committee stage. I do report the bill, senators, as having passed committee stage with 161 amendments. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. Minister. Do report the bill as having passed committee stage with 161 amendments. Mr. President, I ask for third reading of the bill. The question is that the bill be read a third time. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. I feel entitled to an act to repeal and replace the Road Traffic Act to establish the Island Traffic Authority as the authority for the regulation and control of traffic on roads, to improve road safety and transport efficiency and reduce the cost of administering road transport, to create new categories of driver's licenses and for connected matters, read a third time and passed. Mr. President, I, I must again thank colleagues on both sides for their constructive contribution to the process that we've been through over the last three sittings. And um, as it is, I have um, some handy, <laughs> there, as promised earlier, I have two for Senator Brown. <laughs> Uh, in, in the right color, so you don't have to worry about that. And, um, and one for all other members of the Senate present today so that um, we will all be in compliance with Clause 24. <laughs> Mr. President, it is not intended to do any further business today. I just wish to extend our deepest thanks, our deepest and most sincere thanks to the technical team to, from from the Attorney General's Chambers, from Parliamentary Council, from the Ministry of Transport, from the Road Safety Council, and uh, uh, all the stakeholders who have been a part of this long, winding road of almost two decades of work to get the Road Traffic Act modernized, fit for purpose, and ready to usher us into a new, safe, and prosperous future. Mr. President, I ask for the Senate to be adjourned for a date to be fixed. Thank you, leader and senators. The, the question is that the Senate be adjourned for a date to be uh, fixed. Um, and so we stand adjourned. Ask those in favor. Those against, the eyes have it.